Hey there, YouTube. Skeptical Root. Maybe my last video on the 2016 presidential election. Uh, there are a couple things that I've heard come out in the media and come out on YouTube and the other social media platforms that I follow that are driving me nuts. And I feel like I need to do a video to address them. I am. I don't mind doing politics. In fact, I, I like politics. What I don't like are two ideas that I see bandied about repeatedly that are both very, very wrong. Um, and I'm just going to have to talk about them. First off, number one, Hillary Clinton lost the election. She won the popular vote, but she lost the election. Why did she lose? I'll tell you why she lost. Hillary lost because she could not mobilize people to go out and vote for her. If you look at the election history is the last, geez, I don't know, 50, 60. Do we go back 70 years? Maybe not quite 70 years, but 50 years at least. The two things happen. Um, first off, it's rare that the same party can maintain control of the executive branch beyond eight years in a row. Typically it goes eight, four, eight, four, or eight, four, 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 eight, uh, depending on how far back you go. Um, but typically you get someone like Bill Clinton in office or you get someone like Barack Obama in office and they have what could be called good presidencies. They're not the most liberal. They're, they're kind of middle of the road. Um, people hate them for things that have little or nothing to do with their ability to govern. And then when they get out of office, their successor, uh, in Clinton's case, uh, Bill Clinton's case, uh, Al Gore basically tried to run on, Hey, let's get, you know, more of this Clinton magic going on. And it didn't work. It, it rarely works for a, the same party. And this is typically what they do is they, they try to run on their predecessors coattails. Clinton tried to do that on, on Obama's coattails. Hey, basically her message was let's spend more time with this, you know, making going forward with this progress that we've made so far. People don't vote for that. If she had come out and she had said, you know, I have these criticisms of, of Obama and we want to do things differently. Um, we want to be more progressive or more active or more something. Then she would have had been able to energize voters to come out and vote for her. It is always in this country. And I say this always as in, in my lifetime, uh, but typically in the, the, my understanding of politics in this country, it is always the liberals election to lose. The people who believe that it is their civic duty to go out and vote, who typically hold that value tend to be more conservative. They believe in tradition and family values and that type of stuff. And they're the ones who are going to mot be motivated to go out and vote every time. They tend to be older. They tend to be white. Uh, they tend to be Christian. But they all tend to be people who vote and they all tend to be conservative. Which is why low voter turnout typically means conservative victory in an election. Go back and look at the numbers. Look at the number of people who turned out it is when voter turnout is higher that liberals tend to win. Evident or evidenced by the, I, I don't like the term voter suppression, but they, they tend to suppress minority or, or people who vote liberal voters positions. Voter suppression activities in the name of preventing fraud, uh, voter ID laws, things like that, which tend to disenfranchise people who 
aren't as middle class as everybody else uh, who typically vote for liberals they don't end up going to vote when you need a state issued ID here's the, if you need a state issued ID even if you can get one for free if you live in an inner city and you don't and even if you do live in an inner city and don't live near the, the Bureau of Motor Vehicles which typically they don't put them in the most rundown areas in the, the, the cities they tend to put them in the more the middle class areas and people have to come to them but they tend to put them in commercial middle anyway you gotta take the bus to get there taking a bus that's not it's not a regular stop it can take you quite a bit of time you could lose half a day uh going to the bmv to to try to get your state issued id uh if you're working minimum wage or up to a living wage chances are you're taking that time out of your own pocket because your employer is not going to give you time off to go get your id you lose half a day you lose a whole day engage in a poverty simulation at some point and you'll you'll better understand um what that's like to so even though the id maybe itself costs nothing the amount of time energy and effort required to go get there just makes it like i'm not gonna go vote they may be willing once if they had the id to go to the polling place to actually vote um and take the half day to cast their ballot but not to start off with just to get an id so you can do that it's 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 a mess be that as it may uh election fraud particularly voter fraud is more rare than any other type of criminal activity in the united states um there are more people arrested for having sex with animals than are arrested for committing vote fraud. Part of the reason that vote fraud doesn't make sense, especially individual voter fraud, which these laws are all designed to protect polls against, is that the reward is extremely small and the penalties are extremely high. It just it doesn't make sense to... to receive a full conviction of, of vote fraud or vote tampering or whatever the particular state statute is to go to jail for anywhere from five to 25 years for one vote in any election doesn't make sense. But that's what these voter ID laws are all designed to do. They're designed to prevent people from voting when they're not supposed to, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's a lot more effort put into preventing people particularly the, dis the disenfranchised from going out to vote. I don't like the term either, but <sighs> be that as it may, the fact that Hillary did not energize these people to take the time to do that, to go out and vote for this type of stuff is why she lost. Trump didn't win. This is not a Trump victory. Even the people who voted for Trump don't like Trump. They... I hope, and he so far is turning out to not quite be the man that was running for president. I didn't expect him to be. Uh, he ran what I would consider a very conservative, with some exceptions, a very conservative campaign. Uh, but I felt like that was to try to bring in more of the, more of the, the more right wing voters to his position um i don't expect him to be either a able to accomplish a lot of the stuff that he plans on he said he was doing and some of the stuff he's already backed off on you know repeat completely repeal obamacare well we're going to keep a couple of provisions and then we're just gonna make changes to it okay well you're probably not gonna get that done either but hey that's not what you said um david pakman did a, a section a segment on that where he's Basically, eight of his big campaign promises he's already backed off on. Uh, I saw it the other day. I don't think I'm going to go back and link it, but you get the idea. The other idea was that this is a reaction to social justice and the anti-free speech tactics and all this other kind of stuff. No, that's that's not that had nothing to do with this election either. People did not vote against that stuff. Most people, the normies for the most part, aren't even aware of it. 
I, if I go and talk to somebody about trigger warnings at my work and I work at a very progressive place, there are maybe a handful of people who even know what that is. Most of them are college educated. Most of them have, have been out in the world. Um, a lot of them aren't even all that old. You know. but they don't know what this stuff is. The, the, the normal people don't know what this stuff is. Um, very few, even conservatives who don't like this stuff, don't know what this stuff is. Uh, I talked to my dad, who's who has always who who was very into the Tea Party when the Tea Party was a thing, and he still leans that way. He still, you know, sends me emails. You know, Obama's a Muslim and that type of stuff. Um, I love my dad. Don't get me wrong. But he is so wrong in so many political things. Um, and a lot of it is rhetorical. He'll send me the message, oh, you know, somebody said this, and here's here's 49 people that Clinton has killed. And, and no, no, that's, that's not even rational. But my dad doesn't know what that is. My dad probably voted for Trump. Um but he probably voted for Trump as a, as a lesser of evils as opposed to he just he couldn't vote for Hillary because Hillary has always been more democratic, more progressive, more whatever. He couldn't vote for Hillary, even though political politically, he probably lines up a lot more with some of the, the her positions than than Trump's uh, Trump ran as a Republican. And so my dad will vote Republican. My mom voted for Clinton. Uh, not because she even knows what half of Hillary's positions are, but because Hillary's a woman and my mom's a feminist. And and my mom holds some radical third wave ideologies, but she only knows them cursory in a, in a, in a, in a, in a edge of the paper kind of way. She doesn't know a lot of in-depth reading about it. I see a lot of the stuff that she... <laughs> my mom has a Twitter account. My mom, my mom can't... I always remember how her email works. My mom has a Twitter account and she has uh, a Facebook account and she uses them just to repost uh, daily cost things and uh, sign this petition to to stop this thing or save the kitty cats or, or whatever. Um, if my mom has ever heard of Jordan B. Peterson, she probably thinks that he's some kind of... Um, conservative sexist something or other because that's probably the material that she's read from Huffington Post or, or um, Think Progress or something like that. But that's it. Um, Trump, Trump was not a referendum on that either. You may want to think so. The people of the internet, people of YouTube, uh, especially people who follow the social justice uh camps uh trump in no way is a reflection of that trump is the default he's the guy that that got in because they're the because hillary clinton didn't muster enough support behind her it was her election to lose and she lost it she did not get out there and make the right kind of things she if she'd have brought in Bernie Sanders as her VP, Bernie could have energized people to, to vote for her. Um, Bernie also would have been somebody who would have appeared then to be keeping her in check and would have appealed more to the far left-leaning people uh, that maybe Hillary wasn't so bad. Pence, in Trump's case, is there to assuage the feelings of the conservatives that he's actually a conservative candidate. I don't think Trump is. I think Trump is probably a liberal to some extent, but I think he talks a big game and he understands the game of persuasion, especially in getting persuading the people that he wants to, he wanted to vote for him to vote for him. Uh, he did not by any means have a landslide, uh, he didn't even have like, like a plurality of, of electoral votes. He had a majority, but there was no 
sixty percent, sixty three percent, sixty five, whatever Obama had when he ran on the message of hope and change. Whether that happened or not didn't matter. When he ran for re-election, he ran on the same platform. Hey, let's get out there and let's do good stuff. And that got him elected. Twice. Clinton didn't do that. Clinton spent too much time, relatively speaking, defending herself. Too defensive. And liberals aren't going to win that way. Liberals need to get out there and they need to make noise and they need to... Bernie had the right idea, but Bernie was too soft. Bernie did not have the political establishment backing him. Bernie isn't even like, and I'm going to say this, Bernie isn't even a Democrat. He joined the party ostensibly, probably for the most part, to run for the run for president. I don't dislike Bernie's ideas. I think some of his implementation was a little soft, which is why he needed to he needed to run under somebody else, somebody like Clinton, where she, he can push her forward. But it's all it's all pipe dream now. Doesn't matter. They didn't ask me what to do. Neither did you. But I'm telling you anyway. So damn it, suck it up. I guess that's it. Good. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell me what you think down in the. Uh, comment section below you know, I do try to respond to or acknowledge at least in some way with my mom my channel still small every comment that gets made so go ahead and say something about that this is not going to be a widely viewed video I'm sure uh, more stuff coming up that's a little more interesting but that's it so goodbye and hello as always if it doesn't